unabashedly fantastic there are no other ways of describing the first term and it almost feels i'm starting this review with the end at the beginning i need to elaborate on this right now let's be very very clear the omen franchise other than the original with gregory peck has always been kind of victim of mediocrity at best and really being quite terrible at worst it's never been a franchise that has really grasp the so you know the the zeitgeist the way that an alien or a predator or an exorcist or or a friday the 13th or a, or a nightmare on elm street has it's very much always been that kind of horror franchise that just that's just been you know put in the background but what they've done with the first omen it's genius it's absolute genius because it's got no business being this good. Who would have thought that a horror prequel to a franchise that most people couldn't give two squirts of urine about is now in contention of being my horror of the year in 2024? It's I, I, I still am amazed at what I've watched here. Um, yeah, it's... It, 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 what it's done that's so clever is it's it, it's the perfect exercise in restraint this film because it it very much leaves the mind's eye to fill in the blanks it creates a perfect creepiness it creates a sense of tension it plays on the original successes it never ever touches on what the sequels did that was so terrible the setting is interesting. The acting is great in it. And it really never goes into the tried, tested and proven to not be successful realm of jump scares. You don't get any of that. And it never goes into the realm of let's just go uber violent for the sake of it or let's just show a load of CGI monsters for the sake of it. It never it never divulges into the, into those modern horror tropes which ultimately lead to not very good movies. The First Omen is a perfect exercise in restraint because here's the crazy thing. It kind of does all of those things, but it does them in such small amounts and it does them with such brilliance that they don't take you out the movie. It's not jump scare after jump scare after jump scare. It's, it's one or two. Just one or two jump scares in the entire movie. And man, they hit hard. There's not a lot of gore. But when the gore hits on those one or two occasions during the movie, wow, I'm surprised they got away with a 15 rating. And there's not much CG at all. In fact, to that end, it's pretty perfect as a modern horror. And now here's the crazy part. As I mentioned, it does all of these things. But it's the story at the heart of it that is oh so well. Because yes, while it's a little bit guilty of trying to set up sequels when it comes to its conclusion, this film makes a grand effort to lead into the original Omen movie without ever being too on the nose about it, other than in the very final scene, which they had to do and it worked. When you see it, you'll know what I mean. But here's the story at the heart of it all. You've got this young girl who's going to Vatican because she wants to become a nun. She wants to take the veil, right? And she finds out that there's this girl who's... She goes and works in this monastery of girls who have been, like, abandoned, orphaned, yada, yada, yada. So girls who are being raised by the church. And she comes across this one girl who seems to almost be excommunicado, this young girl is apparently violent this young girl apparently hurts other girls this young girl is very much a social recluse so something is going on with this girl and then you find out that the church is at the heart of trying to bring about the antichrist and then you realize oh yeah i'm in a i'm in an omen movie aren't i and it's so successful in the it's very much a movie of two halves the first half very much being this grand setup of how this girl fits into this monetary it's atmospheric it's creepy there is a negative here there's a there's a part where 
one of the nuns says it's all for you and it's a really really unnecessary cheesy throwback to the original movie which if they'd left out the movie would actually be better for it because the moment they put that out, I was like ah you've taken me out the movie there you didn't need to do that um but the first part of the movie it's all set up and i've heard some people say that oh it takes its sweet time it's too long i don't agree I think the first setup is so necessary in creating the denouement and the atmosphere that happens in the second half. But yes, our, our lead girl, our lead aspiring nun, has a, a raunchy night out with one of her nun friends before that night a nun friend takes the veil. And she wakes up and she can't remember anything. All I'll say, that not remembering anything, highly important. You've got great supporting cast with the likes of Bill Nye, who, uh, who who is just on stellar form here. And yeah, man, I, I, I'm going off in all directions here because I'm so taken away by how good this movie is and how it just has no right to be this good. It just doesn't. A, a, a prequel to a forgotten horror franchise should not be this good, but it does everything correctly as far as horror is concerned. It's well paced. It's got good scares. It lets the mind fill in the blanks. It doesn't ever go too hard with the visceral or visual imagery. It's all about planting seeds and letting you creep yourself out. I'd say maybe the only thing that it's truly guilty of is I wouldn't say that it's scary. You know, it's not scary the way that, I don't know, The Conjuring. It, it, it never... I was never like edge of my seat, you know, curled up in a ball the way I was when I watched something like James Wan's The Conjuring. But I tell you what, this may this if you've seen an old horror movie called Don't Look Now, I would assimilate it to that. It really lays the foundation of a great story and then lets your mind f with you while giving you the odd bit of violence here or there, but never too much, the odd jump scare here or there, but never too much, being beautifully shot, being well acted, I find it really, really quite hard to fault this movie. In fact, even as I'm thinking, I'm struggling to find any fault in this movie whatsoever. Um, I guess you've got the whole, you've got the whole cheesiness factor, you've got, uh, do you know what, maybe the fact that it's, yeah, the fact that it does these things that we've seen all before, even though I, I maintain it does them in tremendous moderation. It's a little bit guilty of doing things that we've seen before, but I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, I'm going to go high here. My final score for the first omen, yeah, I'm going to go 8.5 out of 10. I think this movie is an absolute resounding success. It should be seen by everyone who's interested in horror it should be seen by people who have lost faith in this franchise it should be seen by people who don't necessarily want to go and see godzilla or kung fu panda and want a bit of counter programming and it's a real hidden gem this movie like do not sleep on it just because the omen is a franchise that's been driven into the ground do not sleep on this movie if you are a horror fan or if you are generally just a movie fan it won't scare you but it'll stay with you man it's it's from a craft perspective and a restraint perspective, this movie is really quite the thing to behold. But I want to hear from you guys. Now that you've heard my review, are you planning on seeing the first Omen? If not, why not? I'd like to know that. But if you are and you have seen it, what are your thoughts on it? Leave your thoughts in your comments down below. Uh, speaking of hidden gems, there's a review here for a movie called Sweet Caroline, which uh, came out just yesterday. And uh, yeah, uh, a movie which you've probably not heard of, but you should also see. And there's this subscribe button down here. Go ahead and do all that goodness, and I'll see you right here for another review on the Silver Screen Dudes channel very soon. Bye for now.